Hey everybody, Betsy Nama here. I, I'm so delighted to be a part of the creative company here in Thunder Bay. Uh, I have some great news. I've created two amazing paint kits for everybody to enjoy and get creative with. And I have been asked by Dee and Steve to do a demonstration video to show you how to paint my um, amazing little paint kits. The one that I'm going to show you today is the VW van. And this is um, the design that I created. And we're gonna start with the beautiful screen printed canvas here. And the great thing about these kits is you get everything you need to create. We've got brushes, paint, and in a moment, I'm going to turn the camera down so you can see directly how we're going to create this uh, wonderful little painting. And I just want to share with you how near and dear to my heart this painting is because it's actually modeled and created, inspired by my father's VW van growing up. And for all of you who know me in Thunder Bay, you know all about this van. Uh, so I've painted my father's VW van with a canoe um, because we have a cottage on Rainy Lake and we do have a canoe and although this canoe never saw the top of this van, we had some great memories in it. So let's get started and um, you know I'm not going to have the same dynamic as Steve and Dee because I'm by myself here. Uh, and as I mentioned, I am from Thunder Bay. I grew up in Thunder Bay, but I'm now living in Texas. So it's just me and my camera and all you guys who are watching. So let's get started. I'm just going to flip that camera down and we're going to have some fun doing this amazing little uh, art kit. Okay, let's get started here. Um, the creative really did an amazing job putting these kits together. You have everything you need. And now... We're going to open our paintbrush and get the proper one out. Now I always like to start with the background and then I move towards the foreground. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the dark blue color in the background. And we are going to use the number 10 flat brush here. Now keep your paints covered. We don't want to dry those out. We are only starting with that navy blue that's in the tube here. We're going to open it up. Aren't these great little bottles? I'm going to put a little bit on my palette here. Love these little squeeze bottles. And we're going to put the cap back on. We always want to keep our paint uh, covered so it doesn't get, it starts getting gooey and dry. Um, I also have a little paper towel here too as well just so we can wipe our brush in between. I like to just get a little bit of water on my brush and I'm just going to mix it in with this paint and this is just the technique I use because it's just easier to flow and then we're just going to take our time and we're going to start painting the background so we want to get all the negative space here now I have a protective um, piece of paper underneath here just to make sure I don't get any on my table but Take your time, go right up to the lines, and we are going to cover the entire background in this beautiful deep blue, and we are going to need a couple coats of this. So really take your time going up to those lines so that when we do the second portion, and the mid-ground of this painting, we can see where those lines are. So these paint kits, they're wonderful, they're therapeutic, and you know, you don't have to do it all in one shot. If you need a little break, you take a little break in between, and that's the beauty about painting. You, um, you know, work, work as much as you want, it's just important to take your time. If you feel like you, you're starting to rush or you're trying to get um, you know, everything done at once, that's when you know you just gotta take a little break. Take a step back because we don't want you to get frustrated. We want you to really enjoy it. 
just enjoy the color, enjoy the color blue. It's so calming and soothing. This is a beautiful color. Okay. So I always tend to, if you add a little bit of water to your paint, it just runs smoother and it's easier to get right up close to the lines, those black lines without getting over. So I always find it's easier to start um, closer to the line like so, just so you can get right up to the line. And then you can just start spreading, get a little looser and start spreading your paint to the edges. Like I mentioned, we're gonna use it, we're gonna do a couple coats on this blue to get it nice and deep and dark. So you're gonna see those paint marks. It's gonna be all washy, but don't you worry about that because that's gonna go away the more coats that we do. And definitely do not be afraid to turn your canvas so that it's easier for you to work. I tend to rotate it and move towards me like so. I just find it easier, so. When you're working with these kits and you have a screen print or the image already on the canvas, it is so much easier to work on a flat surface than on an easel. Yes, easels are fancy and they're fun, but you know, the purpose of an easel is so that you're looking straight up at the painting and when you're drawing, you don't have a distorted image because when you draw flat, it will look completely um, normal and in you know the proper proportions when you're drawing but then when you lift the image up it might look elongated so that's the purpose of an easel so when you're working with uh, paint kits like this and the drawing is already on your surface you can definitely work flat like this and you're just painting in between the lines so you are good to go Everything's just done super easy for you so that you can enjoy this moment and take your time and just watch your little painting transform. It's really fun for me to do this because I don't have to produce the drawing first. I've already done it. And then it's just been reproduced on this beautiful little canvas. The texture is fabulous, by the way. And these paints are great. They really flow nice. Okay, and as you get uh, to the top where the trees are, you might just have to take a little bit more time. I'm going to get a little more paint on here as I ran out. So as you run out, just start with a little bit at a time so your paint stays nice and fluid. Just add a little bit more. I'm just going to add a little more water. I just like it to be really fluid near these lines. It would be so much nicer if I had somebody to do a commentary with. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking to myself here, even though I know you all you guys are watching and hopefully you get the feeling that I'm talking with you directly. I'm right there in your home with you or the studio, wherever you like to create. Um, I'm right here with you guys. And it might seem, you know, that, oh, it's just kind of painting in the lines, which is such a great start when you're starting off. But we're going to get some technique in once we get to the interior of this. And I'll show you some little signature details that I love to do in my art to get a little bit of texture. But what is so fabulous about these kits is it's great for all levels. Children can do this. They can just paint within the lines. And then if you're a little bit more advanced, feel free to get creative and try your own textures. You know, maybe you've been taking some art classes or you're a seasoned artist and you wanna recreate this with, um, you know, some impressionism or expressive uh, brush stroke. 
you know, so you, you know, it really is for all levels. So I just want you to enjoy it and work within your level. And that's why we do these little demonstrations too, so that, you know, we can show you our technique and how we create our art. But, you know, if you're feeling brave and creative, just jump in there and have some fun. Um, you know, I know Dee and Steve have an amazing color bar too. You can experiment with other colors. Maybe you bought a couple more kits with them of different designs and you have some extra paint. Try different colors. And you know, the great thing about acrylic paint is you can paint over it. If you don't like what you've created or you feel like you've made a mistake, just paint over it. It's just paint. Do you know how many times I've done a painting and I've painted over it? There's probably like three or four different paintings underneath the original one. Okay, so I am going to go in and do a second coat, but before I do that, there's these little uh, negative spaces between the trees up here. I'm just going to put my brush uh, in water and clean it off here because I am going to switch brushes. So we're going to put this one aside. Make sure you clean it very well. I love these buckets. I actually got it for my daughter for Christmas last year and I've confiscated it <laughs> because it's so fabulous. It has like little um, grates at the bottom so I can really get the paint out of that brush. And then I'm just going to dry it out to make sure the paint's off on my paper towel. Okay, so we are going to get this beautiful little round brush number two. And I work a lot with these brushes. Number twos and very fine brushes, believe it or not, in my paintings, just because I can get more detailed. So we're gonna use our number two and we're gonna get these little, you know, blue spaces in here. And you know, don't fret if you go over the line because we're going to get, um, you know, the color of the trees in here after. And we can go over and fix that. You can create your own little shapes if you want. So I'm just gonna speed up the video here. You're going to continue filling in the little negative uh, shapes here within the trees with your blue. And then once you're done that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up doing a second coat of the blue all around the outside. Now make sure that your paint is completely dry before you go and do your second coat. If it is not dry, just take a break, have a cup of coffee, have some lunch, make a phone call, check your emails, or do what I do and use a blow dryer speed up that drying process. Um, if that paint is not dry and you try to do a second coat, it is going to lift that bottom paint up and you're going to start seeing the canvas down below. Uh, so yeah, once you're done that, continue and uh, make sure that your second coat is dry and then go ahead and do a third coat. Once you get three coats of this paint on your canvas, you're going to have a nice deep solid background and that's what you want. Just remember, make sure each coat is dry before you apply that last uh, layer. So I'm just going to continue doing that last layer so that you guys can see how nice and deep this color dries. It looks like blue jean when you start, but when you're finished, you're going to get a nice deep navy, especially when it dries because it always dries darker. So we're finishing up this third coat and I don't know if you guys picked up on this, but I'm doing some editing jobs here. So I'm cutting my video and speeding up certain portions so you guys don't get bored watching this. So I'm sorry if there's an overlap. <laughs> we're going to cover that up with paint. But um, I just wanted to stress, just try and be really careful and try and keep that circle as clean as you can. All the other stuff, no big deal, but circles are so difficult to keep. 
Okay, so I'm just going to um, quickly take my blow dryer to this to get it nice and dry before we move to the next color because we don't want any of this blue to bleed into the next color. And the next one we're gonna do is white. Um, we're gonna do the bottom piece white, and I know the canvas is white, but let's just go over it with some paint so we get a nice um, acrylic coat on this. And then it'll be nice and dry in time for us to do the texture. Okay, so I know I mentioned we're going to do the white next, but I had a change of heart and we are going to actually do the sun first. So we're going to get our beautiful um, peach tone here. We're going to open that up. Oops. And we do not need our um, palette here just yet. Let me just rinse my brush off of all that blue. We want to make sure our brush is extremely clean. Okay. So I've got all the blue off. So what we're going to do is we're just going to begin with a beautiful coat of this um, peach. So again, I like to dip my brush in the water first just to kind of thin down the paint. And then what that does too is it gives you more of an even coat. If you wet your brush a bit, just put a little bit of water on the tip and then dip it in the paint. Um, you've got a lot more fluidity in the paint and you can really get up nice and close and really spread that paint so that you don't have like thick uneven clumps. So it's going to get a little tricky here because we have so many different places to maneuver around like the van and the trees and underneath. So just take your time. So the beauty of photo editing or video editing, I should say, is that I can show you the process of coloring these shapes in in a super speed. That way you don't have to spend two, three hours watching me paint and watching my paint dry. But, you know, you get a good idea of how this is working, how we're getting the colors in. Um, but just note, when it comes to a really technical part where I start putting shading or adding, you know, mixing colors or details, I will make sure that I do the video in real time for you uh, so that you can be sure to, you know, know exactly what's going on and how to get that technique down. Um, so with this background on the sun, the yellow here we're actually we're going to do two coats so get two coats of this solid color down um, and then you'll see I also paint that color in the uh, windows because that sun's coming right through so make sure you get color in there and then for the third coat I'm going to slow down the video to real time because we're going to do a little bit of an ombre effect so I want to make sure that you guys get that technique um, down pat. So just make sure you get two good coats of this yellow in um, the background here where the sun is and then we can work on the next step which is the ombre effect. Okay so we've done our second coat. I feel like I missed this right here. Of this beautiful peach tone. What I wanted to show you is I'm actually going to add a little bit of our rose color. So let's go ahead and open that up. Okay, so I want to add a little bit of this rose to my pie plate. Now we're just adding a little bit because we want to add a little bit of warmth to the sun, but we don't want it to be so peach back there that once we go in and paint our canoe um, 
that we're going to lose, you know, the definition. So let me just rinse my brush off and we're going to take our peach. We're going to add some to the peach and we're just going to mix it. And it's going to warm that up a bit. We're going to get, it's almost going to look flesh tony, but once you get it on top of this coat of orange, so we're going to add some water so it's really watery, and we are going to almost do like a wash. And try to just keep this near our VW. So don't go out to the edges here. We're just going to use some more of the peach there, but what you're going to do is you're just going to add it around the VW, bring it out, and you're going to see that it's going to add a little more warmth to this peach. And it is very subtle, but it really makes for a beautiful color. These are two of my favorite tones that I use in a lot of my painting. It's actually um, called Crush Coral and Oxide Yellow. And I do mix them quite a bit because you just get a really warm, kind of yellowy, peachy blush tone. And I just like the warmth of it. So we're just going to go around the VW. Make sure you get in the windows. So what's going to happen is you're going to have a little bit of that deeper tone um, in the center of the sun. And then we're going to go back to the yellow um, on the outer portions. See how I'm just really going over the whole uh, window here? You can still see the black lines faint. So do under the VW van as well. And I can tell looking in the camera, you can see how you almost get this ombre effect. So you've got the peachy color. So we're doing on top of the van here. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a little bit of water on my brush, dip it back into our peach, and we are just going to start blending it where that line is, where it meet, met the peach. And then you're going to get the nice little ombre effect. And it's very subtle, but... You know, once you step back and look at it, you really see the effect. And then it looks more like a sun, how it's kind of hotter in the middle. A little bit of water. And because that acrylic paint with the peach has not quite dried, you can easily blend those colors. And just work on this side, like, on this side of the trees in between. Don't worry about where the circle is because we're just gonna use our straight peach out of the can for that. Okay. And it's so nice and warm. So that's just a little bit of an advanced technique if you wanna get the ombre effect. Um, if you want to just do the whole sun in this uh, nice peach color, by all means, you can certainly do that. But if you wanted to try a little bit of an advanced technique, use that um, ombre effect I showed you with this peach. Okay? And you know,
know what? I would encourage you just to try it. Don't be afraid because if it doesn't end up being the way that you like it or envisioned it, you can always go over it in this peach again. Okay, just try not to be afraid of paint. The beauty of acrylics is it dries really fast and you can paint over it. Okay, so now I'm just taking the straight peach out of the container I'm going right up against the circle again to get the nice clean line. And this is our third coat. So it is our last coat on the sun. So it's looking very pretty. These colors look great together. The navy with the peach. And this is definitely the hardest part, doing the background colors all in between. And then once we get that VW van on top, um, that's where the fun begins too. I went over my peach with the yellow, so I'm just dipping my brush back into the peach so I can get that pinky color in there. And look at that. We are done our third coat in the sun. And look at that beautiful ombre effect in the center. Isn't that pretty? Love it. Okay, so you can clean your brush off. We can put the cap, and look at how much paint we have left over. You guys got to keep these paints. And then, um, you know, you can save them up, use them on other kits, add some more color. You really get a lot of paint. So we're going to be using uh, the peach for the canoe. But right now, what we're going to do is we are going to... Just add some more white to the bottom here to clean it up. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some white paint right to that area. We don't have anything fancy going on that we need to go around. I'm going to dip my brush into the water, and then I am just going to start spreading that paint. Start in the center, because you're going to want to start spreading, and I don't want you to get carried away and go over your little circle. But then once you get up to the sun, you're going to really be careful and get that line going across. Now this eventually is going to be our water and we're going to do a um, texture technique on the water, which will be a lot of fun but we just want to get a nice coat of white paint down here. So make sure that black line gets covered where you meet up to the sun. So really take your time. Don't worry if it's a little bit squiggly. It doesn't have to be straight because that is the ground. It's going to be the, the shore. And we're going to move on to the VW, but before we do the van, we are going to start with the canoe on top. So let me just do a quick dry on this. Okay, we are nice and dry. Everything's dry, and I'm going to get 
my beautiful rose tone here open again. And we're going to use our angular number six brush. Again, we're just going to dip half the bristles in water and then into the paint. I am turning my canvas. I am a canvas turner. So work with me here. There's my puppy. He wants to come and hang out with me. Okay. And we are going to do our first coat. And with our first coat, don't you worry about those little lines that we have there. We are going to go right over them because we will be able to see the guides underneath. Okay, it's just the first coat. And we want to go over the black lines at the top. have to take a, a, a quick break here in a second to see if my puppy wants to go for a little break so maybe he'll come join us okay so I have got my first coat now don't worry if you find it's kind of blending into the background of the Sun there don't you worry, we're going to get um, some highlights in there so that we can make this beautiful canoe pop. Okay, so I'm going to take a quick time out here. I'll let that dry. I'll be back in a flash. Okay, I am back and my first layer is dry so I'm going to go back in for a second coat so I've got my second layer of that pink in and while the paint's wet, let's just get a little bit of white on our palette here. Dip your paint in the brush. Get a little bit of that white on your brush. You still have pink on your brush, so just add some white a little bit at a time so you get a really light peach. And now what we're going to do is at the top of the canoe, we're just going to add that lighter pink in one stroke, just like so. Get a little bit more if you need it. It's going to help it pop off the back ground of that sun. I'm just dipping my brush into the water again because I want the paint nice and fluid. And we're going to go down the curve. Okay. And then what we're going to do with our brush, once we've gone down the curve, is just... Blend a little bit into that pink, like so. Okay, and then here it's very thick, so I'm just going to go over it again. We want to do the same thing on the other side, so get a little bit more of that light pink when you do the curve. And then just blend a little bit into that pink. Then what you can do is just use the palette 
to get the excess paint off. So you still have a little bit of a lighter pink. Dip your brush, just the tip in water, and then just the tip again in the pink. And then what we're gonna do is our third coat. Now the, the light pink is still wet. So you're going to go over your third coat on the dark pink and just start to blend in to that white. And you'll see it'll all mush together. So that you get the effect of the curve. Okay, I'm just going to rinse my brush. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our thin, whoops, little round number two brush, dip it in water, get a little bit of that white paint on there. Okay, so you have pure white paint. And we are just going to do the top in white. Almost like a little outline. So it's just a little bit brighter. Any excess you can kind of blend in. It doesn't have to be even thickness all the way across. But then you've got and I'm just going to bring a little bit down here, too, because we lost a little bit of that just around the curve. Okay, and then you see the top of the van, or sorry, the top of the canoe. It pops out. And then with your dry brush, you have a little bit of white. If you want to go in and just do a little streak, Across the canoe like this. You know your pink is still wet so you can blend it lightly and then you get a little more of that curb appeal there. See that? Okay so for now we are done with the pink. We will be using it again in a portion of the water so we can put the lid back on. And then let's move on to yay, the van. So we're going to take our beautiful light blue here. And I'm going to use the number six angular brush. And we're going to tip, dip our brush into the paint. And we are going to start painting the bottom portion of the VW van. So I'm going to speed up the video a bit here, uh, but I, I just want to stress, paint that whole section of the bottom of the VW blue. Don't worry about all those little black lines and the details. Um, it, it's going to be painful to try to go around everything. So I just want to show you an easy way to get all these colors in and we're going to pop those details in after and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, once you get the first coat in, you're still going to see the little lines faintly underneath, uh, but we're going to do a second coat here because we really want a solid opaque um, color. So as I was explaining in the video, as I was painting, just to paint over it, <laughs> that's why I went and put it up in your face. Um, but yeah, do your second coat and um, don't worry about those details. I'm going to show you how to get them back in in a Let's minute here. close this up and start working on some of that white in the top of the VW bus. Okay. So I'm going to get some white on my palette. Clean my brush off. Okay, I am actually going to be using my round brush. 
I prefer this brush because I just have more control, especially over these curves. So we are just going to get in there with the white and we're gonna start working on the top of the band here. Okay, so just fill in the top of the band with white, cover up that top black line. Don't worry about the bottom one. You wanna say hello, Koa? Okay, gotta show you my pooch, my little puppy. Koa, Koa, Koa. There's my puppy. There's my little puppy. Isn't he sweet? Okay, let's get back to painting. All right. And I just had to do a little impromptu introduction with Koa. Isn't he a sweet little puppy? Okay, so as I was mentioning, don't worry about that bottom black line because we're going to go in and put one right back in there. So if you don't cover it all up, it's no big deal. Okay, so now we're gonna bounce back to the van, open up your blue, and we're gonna do a second coat on uh, the van, just to make sure we get nice, uh, deep, opaque color on that blue. So go ahead and do that. Like I said, don't worry about those little lines. And I'm gonna slow down the video here and show you a technique. Okay. So we've got our blue in. Oh, that's beautiful. Two coats only needed. So what we're gonna do, you've still got a little bit of blue on your brush. I want you just to dip a little bit in the white that you have on your palette. Put a little tiny bit of water. Get a little bit of white on there. Okay, and let's just get a little dimension. So at the base of your bust, just do a streak and don't go crazy blending too much of it in, okay? But you see how you just see a little lighter tone there? And then we are going to go a little bit higher here at the top and do the same thing. So do a streak, just like so. So you've got, literally have a couple streaks of that white in there and that's just going to give it a little dimension without changing the color okay so let's clean our brush off and now we can start working on um, the rest of the white up in here so let's go ahead and cover the blue we're not going to need that until we do the trees the trees are the very last thing we're going to do so I need a little more white on my palette here. Okay. First thing I'm gonna do is go back and do another coat up here while it's dry. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work on this little peak right here. So I'm gonna get my brush be very gentle and do that curve you've got to really take your time here hang on a sec I have a little string hanging from my brush I'm just gonna pull that out okay did I get it right in that little peak and you want to make sure all the black lines are covered because we are not going over that edge there in the black it's just going to be white okay i'm going into super speed here so you don't have to sit here and watch me do the white but you're just going to fill in the top portion with white and just like we did in the blue part below you can go over the black grate we are going to go back in and fill that in so you're going to do two coats in all and really take your time going around the windows you can get a little curve in there in the window 
um, to get, you know, the nice distinction of those uh, uniquely shaped windows. And then we're going to where the black lines are here between the um, front windshield and the side window, you're just going to put thin white lines over there. And you could just add a second coat if you like, if you find that it's not thick enough, which is what I did. I find the two coats of the white is perfect. Okay, so we've completed our second coat. Let's go in down at the bottom of the VW bus here and get a little bit of white on this front bumper. So we're just going to add a little bit of white above that black line. We still have that black line to put in there, but we just really just want that bumper. Okay, and then we're going to move to the back of the bus and we are going to do the same thing here. Back bumper. And you can extend it beyond um, the bus just a little bit. And at the same time, let's get in the little headlight so with your white you're just going to do like a little half moon and then go ahead and rinse your brush and we're going to get that thin little white line and we're going to get the distinction of the door back in here so just like we did with the windows up here get a little bit of paint on your brush and Dip it in your white, just to loosen the paint up a bit, okay? And then swirl your brush just to, so you get a little bit of paint on the, the end there. And we're going to start right about here and just do a really thin so you're really light on the tip of the brush and you're going to follow along right towards the back of the bus. Oops, my line's a little jaggedy, but that's okay, just like so. Okay, we're going to get a little bit more white on the tip of our brush again. Okay, I just have a little bit there, and we are going to get that door in. So right here between this white line, actually if you look at the top of the strap, you're just going to bring a straight white line down to get the door in. And just come all the way down that black line just like so okay one thing we didn't get in yet is that little yellow um, blinker up here so we're gonna get our orange we're gonna dip our brush into it and we are just gonna add a little half circle right here and it's literally where, you know, where our white line ended. We're going to get that little light in there. And that's it for that. Okay, so we are done with the white. We're going to start working with the black to get a little more definition. But look at how it's coming so far. It's pretty great. Okay, so let's get our black.
Okay, so sorry about that. A little time out. I think I had already opened this and I closed it, so I'm opening it again. <laughs> okay, so we're going to use our same number two round brush and we're going to get some of those um, black details in. So again, same process, dip half your brush into the water and then into your black paint. And we're gonna begin from the top and move to, actually, no, we're gonna start with the wheels because we haven't gotten the wheels in yet. So let's just begin by painting in our nice black wheels. Okay, so just start off by getting in the uh, color into your wheels. Get that nice black wheels in there. And then we're gonna start using some fine black lines to get into the um, contouring of the VW. There we go. Okay, and then now that we have the wheel in, we can do the bottom of the van. Just a nice black line along the bottom of the white line. Continue the black line under the blue. It's at the bottom of the van. Make sure when you're putting paint on your brush, you're just putting it on the tip. Okay, just like so. Can you guys see? So you shouldn't have paint way up here or even up here, just on the tip of your brush. It'll stay much cleaner. It'll be much easier for you to work with. And then we're gonna do the base of the bumper here. Okay. And then we can get the little grate in over here. Now I can't see my black lines anymore and you probably can't either, so we're just going to add some lines going across. One, two, three, four, and five. And it's okay if they're different thicknesses. Makes it more realistic. And then there's two up here we can get in. One line, two line. And then let's go ahead and get the little handle in. Right here, just one short little line. And then I'm going to turn this again. And then the little headlight, we're going to do half of that white line. We're just going to do a little black outline like so. And while I'm down here, I'm just going to do another little coat on my tire. Try to get that nice and solid. And we're going to go back in and we're going to do a little white hubcap after this dries. Okay, and then I'm going to rotate this again. Let's get that black line in under the top of the bus here. It's just a nice thin black line. Again, we just have a little bit of paint on the tip of our brush. My, my line isn't straight either and you know what it doesn't have to be because remember this is hand painted you know we're not using rulers or getting um, scientific or technical here with our angular lines this is a hand painted painting so 
Don't expect to have, oh, look what I did. See, I brought some paint. I'm going to touch that up after. Because stuff like that will happen. It happens to me all the time. Okay, so we've got our black line under the brush. I mean, under the brush. <laughs> under the bus. Top of the bus. Okay, and then now we can go in and get our straps in. So it's funny because on the silk screen, I didn't put that. I think I made a mistake when I was painting it, putting the two straps. You can do that if you want, but what we're going to do is we're just going to do um, a strap underneath. So we're going to bring one line down here. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. Because in actuality, the, the um, canoe is sitting on this strap. It's kind of like got two poles that it sits on and then you strap it in. So let's go ahead and get that thin line underneath the canoe so we have some distinction. I'm going to wash my brush off again because I want to make sure I can get the thinnest line possible. A little bit of water, a little bit of paint. Look at that tiny little bit there. And then we are just going to get a thin line underneath. Add a little more paint if you need. And then the last thing we'll do are these two straps securing our canoe. So we're going to start with the top of the canoe. There's a little bit of a bend in that strap. Like a little bit of a curve. And then it just stops at the top of the bus there. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. Bring it right down. I'm going to make this a little thicker. I wonder how many other people had this van. So popular in the 70s. Although I don't think my dad got his until the 80s. But we had it a very long time. And I learned how to drive on this van. And it was standard and it stalled whenever you let the clutch out. So if you wanted to put the brake on or you were at a stop sign, this thing would stall. <laughs> you have to try to balance the clutch and the gas without it moving if you didn't want it to stall like dad why are you teaching me how to drive on this crazy bus it was fun it was scary i won't lie i learned how to drive it in the um parking lot at the auditorium when it was empty of course okay so i'm just actually touching up here so if you guys have done what i've done and you've got a little bit of paint You can just go in and touch up. Alrighty. So, are we done? Oh, we just have one little. So, on the handle here, I added a little highlight of white. Just a little bit on the top. Let's see. Just to kind of make that stick out. There you go. So, we're totally done our van. Oh, we've got to get a little bit of the... the um, light here let me show you how to do that the reflection on the windows okay 
So we've got, I've got a little bit of white on my palette still. Let me just make sure my brush is clean. I'm going to use a dry brush. So make sure your brush is very dry and just get a little bit of white on there and just like so. Okay, but then you're gonna work it on the palette so almost all of it comes off. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna add these dry streaks in the window to make it look like it's a reflection. Need a little bit more. And I'll show you up close in a second what it ends up looking like. It's very subtle, but It does make a difference. You just want to make sure that your brush is dry. I'm just adding more because it wasn't. So if you find it's not enough reflection, you can just add a little more. Like right here in the front. I want a little bit more. See that? Just dry brushing. And you've got a reflection. Okay, so let's start working on these trees. We are almost there. So I'm going to flip my canvas because my trees are up here. And we're going to use the same blue as we used for our BW van. I'm going to use my angular brush. And we are just going to start painting in the trees. Now on my painting, the trees that are within the sunset, so within that circle and in, are going to be the navy blue. And the trees against the navy blue background are going to be those light blue. But what we're going to do just to start off is we're going to paint all these, like this part that I'm going over the sunset is going to be all the same blue. We're going to come in after and paint over that in a dark blue. But I find this the best way approach in doing this. So go around all your little dark blue spots. So this step is quite easy. You're just going to color in, you know, finish coloring those um, blue trees at the top here. And I recommend a good three coats. Uh, in the video I did two because I wanted to speed up the process and I didn't want to bore you, but I did end up speeding this up for you. <laughs> Anyways, isn't it fun to watch it? Just kind of come to life in fast motion. Okay, so finish up uh, these these uh, trees, get three coats in there, and then I will be back to show you the next step. Okay, now we're done all our light blue. We're gonna get our dark navy blue and we're gonna start working on the silhouette of these trees. So you're gonna add a little bit of that dark blue to your palette here. And I am going to be using my little number two round brush. And I'm going to start over here on this Three, just to keep it simple. So color that in. And we're gonna need about three coats of this to get that nice deep navy, like the background.
Okay, let's turn this here so I can work better. And what we're gonna do is we are going to get half of that silhouette on the circle here. So we're going to just continue the roundness of our circle. Just draw a line connecting the circle from one yellow to the other, and then everything below that you do in this deep navy color, just like so, okay? So we're gonna do that to all three trees that are hanging over. Okay, so that one, we're gonna come back in and do another coat on this guy. Just get rid of some extra paint there and spread it. Okay, and then this little guy, same thing. Just draw a little line across. And then everything below, doing the dark blue. There we go. Take your time doing this. Now, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, you can completely leave it if you want or give it a try. And if it doesn't turn out the way you like it, then you know what? Paint over it in the light blue again. I'm gonna keep stressing it's only paint. Sometimes we make mistakes and they become beautiful oopsies, so. I've done that a lot. So I have a series of paintings where I have um, like paint splatters in the background. And that's all because one day I was working really hard on this beautiful painting. And it was um, almost a watercolor effect. I was using very washy paints. And I dropped a splash of paint as I was dipping my brush in the paint and I lifted up, a splatter of paint ended up on my painting that I was working hours on. And I just ended up turning it into part of the painting. So what I did was I just added more splatters and it became a really big trend in some of the art that I was doing for home decor. I did quite a number of series with that background in it. Okay, so now I'm working on the branches and the trunk of the tree. So we're just gonna color that in with the navy. So you're gonna wanna make sure you get three coats of this uh, navy blue in the silhouette of the trees so you get that nice deep rich color. So what we're going to do now is I really want to move down to the water and show you how to get um, the movement of the water here. And we are going to use our navy blue for the beginning stripes and then we're going to use the pink underneath. What we're going to do is you've got to add some, I already have navy blue on the palette here, so you've got to add some water. So you've got it nice and runny and loose. And then go ahead and clean that brush off. Okay, dip your bristles in water again and get some paint on. The reason why I did that is like I always show you is I don't want paint up here. I just want it on the tip. Now, you will have to probably turn it like this to get the lines in. You're gonna use your finger, like you're gonna have your, your palm on the canvas to guide you. And we are going to do nice thin lines across. Now, you want some to be thick, some to be thin, so kind of raise your brush up, press down, and bring it right across. And you can go right onto uh, the blue background. Okay, 
They don't have to be perfect. That's the beauty of it. You want it to be like water. So press down in some areas and bring it up. And now the reason why we have it watered down too is we kind of want the, the paint to be a little translucent so you get different tones uh, within the blue. So some parts of the paint will be a little more opaque and some will be a little more translucent and then you really get kind of that nice movement. A little more paint on there. So thinner in some areas, thicker. And just bring it right across. So we're gonna get a couple of those in. Get a few more. And it's okay if some end up touching. I'm gonna get one more in here. And then now that we're done with the blue, we are gonna to move to our nice blush tone. And let's get a little bit of this on our palette. You don't need a lot. I'm actually gonna close that up. Again, a little bit of water to make it nice and runny. Not too runny, just you know, a couple dips of your brush should be perfectly fine. Again, I'm gonna rinse my brush, clean it off, Dip the bristles in again and then get some paint on there. You want it nice and watery. And then we are just going to continue with that same method, okay? And bring it straight across. This time, don't go over onto the blue. You don't want to get the pink onto your blue, but press down and lift up on the brush so you get various thicknesses in those stripes. What I like to do is just turn my um, canvas this way so it's straight, just to make sure that my lines are pretty straight. I mean, they don't have to be perfectly straight, but you want them going horizontal and not like diagonal on an angle. So I'll just check every once in a while to make sure. And remember, you always have to keep in mind, this is a hand painted painting. So you want to continue this technique with the pink all the way to the bottom of the circle. And there we go. We are almost done. There's only one more thing that we have to do that completes the painting. We've come a long way and that's getting the little white line around this entire circle. So let me just make sure this is completely dry before we do that. Okay, so for this final touch, let's get some white paint on our palette. We've got our nice little number two round brush. Again, dip the tip into water. Get it nice and just a little fluid here. Okay, so I'm actually going to begin in these top spaces here, like these little areas. We are just going to get a white outline. Now we're not going through the trees. We're gonna skip it and we're just going where the orange meets the deep navy blue. So just take your time and you're just tracing with the paintbrush. And you know what? Everybody's gonna have different thicknesses here, so don't you worry. Some people might do it really thin, some might do it super thick. And that's okay. 
what makes us all unique. Okay, so just take your time and continue that white line around the entire circle. Uh, and I ended up doing two coats. If you do two coats, you'll be much happier because you'll get that nice, thick, bright white white line and you will see how am I thinking about wine or something <laughs> I must said wine line um, but you will see how this image will just pop right off the page with that white line so amazing look at that you guys I know that you're gonna have fun doing this painting I want you to take your time you don't have to do it in one shot. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. I really enjoyed being with you today and showing you how to paint this amazing little VW camper. Hope you guys had fun and I hope this helps you. Uh, and thank you again, the creative, for letting me be a part of your team. And um, I am going to have Many more little paint kits and drawing kits coming up available. So stay tuned. And if you really enjoyed painting this painting, you've got to go and try my glamping one as well. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Thanks for joining me. Miss you guys all up in Thunder Bay. So stay creative in these hard times. All right. See you guys.